need to know. Guy Fawkes and the gunpowder plot. It's November the 5th, 1605. A member of parliament rushes along a corridor in the Palace of Westminster, clutching a note. He is hurrying to warn the king that later this same day, he will be murdered. My goodness, this sounds like the plot to a Hollywood film. Well, you're not wrong. And plot is certainly the appropriate word. This real-life story of treason, torture, revolution and execution was later used as the basis for the film V for Vendetta and is more commonly known as the gunpowder plot. Wait, wait, I know that one. That's the guy with the anonymous mask, right? Oh, you are on form today. Yes, that's the one. And, and again, great choice of vocabulary. That mask is actually based on the face of the most well-known plotter, Guy Fawkes. And who, pray tell, is he? Glad you asked, because that is why we're here today, to talk about this man, his life, legacy, and impact on history. Oh, is this going to be another one of those men of history conversations? Uh -huh. Because, frankly, I think I'd rather be dragged down the street well, uh, than relentlessly hanged uh, until almost dead, really? have my genitals cut off ah. and flambéed in front of Ooh. me before I have my internal organs removed. Yeah, oh, okay, okay, okay. I don't think you have any idea of just how much this story is going to be right up your wheelhouse. Like a mixed metaphor? We'll burn that bridge when we come to it. So, Guy Fawkes was born in York to a Catholic Hang family. Hang on a minute. Why do you have to characterise him by his religion? Look, this is why you need to pay attention in history class. Okay, look, um... After the decision of Henry VIII to not keep his breeches shut tight, and Anne Boleyn, the original Beyoncé, told him to put a ring on it, there was a degree of tension. Between Catherine and Anne and Henry. Well, yeah, most of Europe. And then, almost exclusively, Scottish football fans. But that's another conversation. For another day? Yup. So, anyway, Catholics, Protestants, big tension. Like Real Madrid, Barcelona, Colacao, Nesquik, Tortilla with or without Cebolla... Can you put Sharitha in paella? You know the stuff. The Gordian knots of human existence. I understand. Yeah. So uh, back in the early 1600s, it was very much a Colacao Nesquik time. Look, context is important. So let's remember, in 1588, Spain had launched the Armada at England to force it back under Catholic rule. And then the Virgin Queen killed her cousin and died without having children. So England made a swift call to Scotland, yellow, and asked their king if he wanted to be the king of England as well. So there were two kings? Um, no, just the one, James I and VI. Right, OK, maybe I'm not being clear. So there were two kings? No, 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 same guy. Just he was James I of England, but James VI of Scotland. So he was kind of James I of England and James VI of Scotland. OK, I get it. James, I mean, Jimmy, was a popular name in Scotland then. Right, you are, Hen? Um, yeah, uh, that's probably correct. Um, anyway, um, there was a Catholic fan club in England consisting of a handful of nobles who would get drunk and say things like, you know what's wrong with this country? Too many Protestants. Uh, and so based on that shared enthusiasm for religious change, they hatched a plot. Elites manipulating the fabric of society to reflect their personal preferences. As we say in current year, imagine my shock. Yeah. Um, well, let's not get political yet. Uh, so this group of nobles wanted to assassinate all the politicians and the king in one clean operation that would quite literally be a uh, great reset of English society in uh, their favour. How on earth would you great reset an entire society? Maybe some kind of health scare? Careful. Tech giants are listening. Um, well, that is the genius of the plot. The nobles had discovered that below the Houses of Parliament there were a series of cellars which were quite rank actually uh, damp from the water of the Thames seeping through the walls and full of rats so not very desirable but still like places to live in London available for rent if you wanted to convert one into a prestige living space or store some vegetables or something much more nefarious than that uh, Parliament is opened every year by grace of the monarch which meant all the politicians gathered and the king would attend to perform the opening ceremony it was literally an all for one opportunity the nobles saw this and rented a cellar directly below the building. The plot was to fill that space with barrels of gunpowder and at the right moment, light the fuse. 
boom. Shaka like. I mean, it was devious. Genius. Blow up a lot of them. Clear them out. MPs, Lords of the Realm, the entire royal line. It would have been an ultimate decapitation hit. He had enough gunpowder to lay waste to the entire estate. Calm, calm, a blast calm, down, right. calm, calm down. You sound breathlessly enamoured with this plan. I mean... This is the utter genius of the event. It is the ultimate what-if counterfactual narrative inflection point. I mean, it is just so... so... Audacious? I was going to say bonkers, but yeah, that works. But this is all hypothetical. I suspect you're going to tell me how it all went wrong. Well, it's funny you should say that because then it all went horribly, torturously wrong. Flashback to that chap running down the corridor with a note in his hand. His name was Lord Monteagle great name. He had received an anonymous letter warning him to take the day off. Because things were going to get a little bit explosive. Exactly. He took the note directly to the king. King Jimmy, however, was quite convinced of his power and thought it laughable that anyone would attempt something so absurd. Monteagle begged him to at least investigate, so the king grabbed a nearby gentleman, Thomas Nivet, and demanded he go into the dark rat-infested cellars below to satisfy the lord's paranoia. The gentleman was less than thrilled to be sent on what he considered to be a fool's errand. So he went in search of his ale-brewing beast of a buddy, Edmund Doubleday. Tom, remind me again why we need to be traced around the undercroft at night. King's got spooked. Worry about some pop to rob house of parliament during his speech tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, I know, I know. But that would need, what, at least a ton of gunpowder. Turn it off, geezer. There's no way anyone's getting that much gunpowder on the estate. Someone had noticed. Yeah, but look, it's almost certainly nothing. We might get a canal because you're tired of it. I already managed the distillery and the library. And you're the water of the Royal Mint. What are you angling for now? I don't know. I'm trying to work out where our accents are coming from. Um, I, I always find a knife a little bit. Oh, wait, 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 who's that? Who? Where? Fat fella coming out of our cellar. What's he doing? Oh, you. Look, you're in for the art time. You go get him. Me? Yeah, yeah, that's why I didn't bore you, do it! Hey! Hey! You, come over here! You scrapped me sword there, Tom. Oh, God, you travel one up and I can point you for your brawn, not your brains. Stop him! No, 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 I've got a better idea. I'm going to throw him on the floor upside down. I can't move. Ooh, nice. <laughs> okay, time up, and I'll search him. I'll see what he's doing. Uh, just, no, I, there just seems to be some coal on fire over there. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, hang on. Wait a moment. Oh, oh, blimey. What is it, Tom? Uh, we better wait, Mark. Who? I mean, everyone. Why? Oh, crumbs. The no, I'd say there's about a what? A ton of explosives here. I reckon more like a ton and a half, mate. Cheeky beggar. Air wallet. So he was busted, caught red-handed. A slap on the wrist for a first offence? Hmm. Um. No. He was taken immediately to the king's chambers to explain himself. He uh, he gave a false name, uh, probably some sort of 1600s uh, joke, uh, John Johnson, and uh, remained defiant. Um, when asked what he planned to do, he responded, wait for it, this is good, <laughs> to blow your Scotch beggars back to your native mountains. A diehard to the end, it would seem. I suppose this annoyed the king. Uh, Jimmy, no, actually, he was rather impressed, <laughs> to be fair. Um, but after getting no results on the names of the plotters that were involved with him after the first 24 hours, um, Jimmy signed a warrant to use uh, uh, torture to get the names of the rest of the conspirators. Hmm, they made him listen to reggaeton and eat his vegetables? <laughs> no. Uh, the king orders men at the tower to start with, I think the quote in the line and in the letter is, the gentler of the methods. Mm, sounds es nice. Sorry? It sounds nice. Yes, it does, doesn't it? Um, escalating to the most um, arduous. Uh, he was subject to uh, the manacles and then the rack. And within two days, he had uh, confessed all the names and, you know, responsibility for everything wrong in existence. Um, the extent of the torture, in fact, was so appalling. You can see it in his, um, his signature. Uh, before all these events took place, he had this big, flamboyant, open-ended signature. And then when he signs the confession after the torture, it's just the crumbly ruins of a broken man. So I imagine the rest of the plotters were swiftly arrested then. Oh, this is where the story gets really pitiful. Um, they obviously had to uh, 
make a dash for it and uh, tried to find um, help but all the doors were closed in their faces across the country and they were on the run um, then in the cold wet dark of uh, an English winter they tried to light some gunpowder to get uh, a fire going and a stray spark ignited the powder, engulfing the group in flames. Ironic. Yeah, what do you think, wouldn't you? They'd probably laugh at it, wouldn't they? Uh, but no, they were eventually pinned down in a dramatic shootout at a place called Holbeck House in Staffordshire. Uh, burnt, injured, some possibly even blinded. Uh, four were captured. The suspected ringleader, Thomas Catesby, Catesby or Catesby? I'm never quite sure. I think it's Catesby. Um, well... He was killed in the shootout. This is starting to sound like a Marvel movie. Yeah, to be honest. Uh, they were then held in the tower for, get this, 10 weeks. And they were obviously put to significant torture as well, as the king tried to find out uh, any further information behind uh, the foreign powers involved in the plot. I imagine there was a parade of foreign governments and state officials falling over each other to distance themselves from such outrageous allegations. You got it. Uh, you know, uh, the plot was down to uh, Protestant heretics and atheists etc etc nothing to do with us jimmy i swear exactly so there must have been a trial of some sort of sorts yeah um in january 1606 the star chamber was convened. i'm sorry the, the star chamber and you're certain this isn't the plot to a marvel movie yeah and uh, it's not even a paul weller song either this is real life i'm afraid the star chamber was a court created to originally ensure fair enforcement of laws against powerful people as ordinary courts might hesitate to convict in fact in the end it became synonymous with oppression and arbitrary use of power and rulings made far removed from public scrutiny good old lady justice they were found guilty weren't they yep and the punishment for treason was in those days to be hung drawn and quartered this is going to be really disgusting isn't it not of the process was explained to them as part of the sentencing each of the condemned would be drawn backwards to his death by a horse his head near the ground he was to be put to death halfway between heaven and earth as unworthy of both his genitals would be cut off and burnt before his eyes and his bowels and heart then removed then he would be decapitated and the dismembered parts of his body displayed so that they might become prey for the fowls of the air oh good lord i think the worst thing about that is the accent but it's put me right off my haggis uh, what did guy say when he was presented with his future castration and dismemberment it is thought he would have muttered something Thing along the lines of air bollocks but this is unconfirmed um in fact i believe when presented with the sentencing he said something like um, oh oh that treason oh i didn't understand what you were charging me with um yeah and no, i'm totally guilty of that well but you know a punishment and a deterrent i am sure the remaining conspirators were executed in the grisly fashion described although one plucky old robert keys he tried to avoid the horrendous process of being castrated and disemboweled alive by jumping from the gallows while in the noose the idea being that he would break his own neck sadly he survived his attempt at suicide and then was taken a quivering wreck to uh, what was called the quartering block for his grisly fate that's a hell of a day yeah, yeah i know but our main man guy fawkes despite being broken by torture he did succeed in escaping the dismemberment by doing the same thing he jumped from the gallows and broke his neck go guy go so a huge plot to eliminate the power elite of the country averted and everything back to normal you would think but history doesn't work like that clearly this had rattled the power elites so what happened was they made a law that every november 5th the people had to gather in the local church and listen to a service of thanksgiving that the plot had been foiled this law in fact wasn't repealed until 1859 but by that point the evening had developed into a community gathering people would make large bonfires and drinking and unruly behavior became the norm english people drinking so just a normal friday night i know right in fact you know the night had become such a fundamental part of the ordinary people's cultural calendar that even during the puritanical republic period in england which even saw christmas cancelled november the 5th was untouchable 
You know, when I was younger, you'd see kids asking for a penny for the guy. Uh, what was that all about? People would burn an effigy of Guy Fawkes on the bonfire and raise money uh, in the weeks beforehand. Uh, we have references to that well-established tradition as early as 1790. In fact, the name Guy then entered the English language as a person, or well, a man, dressed in unusual clothes. And now it's just a synonym for a, a guy, a geezer, a man, a bloke, a, a dude. Yeah, you know? Fella. You're right, guys. But people don't really burn Guy Fawkes effigies these days, do they? In some places, they still hold to the original tradition. But in general, the event has become a, a bit of a political pressure valve uh, for social tension. Uh, people burn effigies of current deeply unpopular leaders. Or even famously, in 1998, they burnt effigies of David Beckham after he was sent off in the England World Cup defeat to Argentina. Well, hang on a minute. This is, this is quite poetic. So what started as a ritual to enforce the power of the state has become an expression of anger against the power structure. Yeah, and it seems what Oliver Cromwell could not achieve has finally been done in the name of public health and austerity. In this immediate post-COVID COVID world, many local councils have cancelled bonfire night events to avoid the gatherings of large crowds, or simply they've said because they do not have the money to pay for it. Well, most people would know about this through the film V for Vendetta, as we mentioned earlier. Um, if I say, remember, remember the 5th of November, people think I'm quoting that film, right? Yeah gunpowder treason and plot um, and the mask the character wears in the film a likeness of Guy Fawkes has become a symbol of resistance to oppression and is recognised the world over as such it's very curious that the man has become the idea that survived the ravages of history yes and as the English like to say Guy Fawkes the last man to enter parliament with honest intentions if you would like to know more about Guy Fawkes and the gunpowder plot check out the resources in the link below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.